Hello friends, we are still not employed by a fang company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do a lead code premium problem, high five. And uh, the, though it seems like an easy problem, this actually covers a pretty interesting topic uh, that is asked by a lot of fang companies. Uh, and the topic is max heap min heap. So let's understand the problem statement. Essentially, we are given a two dimensional array that looks like this, uh, where we are given ID and score for different students uh, that are studying in a class. Now we are given at least five scores or more uh, for every single students uh, and which we can see over here that over here we are given two IDs. So the IDs we are given are uh, student ID one and student, uh, student ID two and for student ID one we are actually given the results of six different scores and for student ID two we are given the results of five different scores. Now our aim in this case is to calculate the average for top five subjects. Uh, so this is really important that we need to calculate the average of top five subjects. So in this case, since we are given six scores, we only need to choose the top five sc uh, scores and not all six of them. So this is a key point to understand. And uh, we need to build a two dimensional array in the result and we need to return uh, the result for every single ID. So uh, uh, ID number one and ID number two, in this case, we need to return whatever the average we have found for top five subjects and we need to return them in an increasing order based on whatever the given ID. If we take a look at this example, in this example for service ID number one, we are given following scores. Since we are given six scores over here, we only need to choose top five. So we are not going to choose this score number 60 because that is the lowest out of all. And we are going to choose the remaining five scores. So essentially we are going to do a sum of all these uh, scores and we are going to divide it by five. So that will give us the average of top five scores for this one. And for uh, student ID number one, the average would be 87. Now we need to do the same same calculation for student number two. Now in student number two, it's a little bit easy because we are only given uh, five distant different scores and we just need to do some of those. So we don't have to eliminate any score. We can simply do some of those to 88. So now and now we have reached the end of all the student IDs and we have found the average. So in this case, we are going to return a two dimensional array like this. And this would be our answer. So the first approach we can use is we can actually sort the given input and we can sort the given input based on uh, ID and after we are done sorting it with using ID, we can sort it for every single ID. We can sort it using a uh, score. So that will make our lives easier. And uh, suppose we are dealing with the same input. So we can sort this input uh, as mentioned based on ID and score. And this would be the sorted input. Okay. So now since we have the sorted input, it becomes pretty trivial that how we are going to actually solve it. We are simply going to iterate over the sorted array and for every single ID, we are only going to iterate over it uh, just five times. So whatever top five values we found, uh, we can keep on adding those top five values. Uh, once we have, once we reach end of the loop and we, we are done with uh, the top five values, we are going to divide it with whatever the sum we have found with uh, value number five. And that would give us the average of that particular ID. And then we will move, then if for that ID, if more entries exist, we are just going to ignore all of those cases. And then we will simply switch on towards new ID. And we are going to keep on repeating this process. So let's see that in the action. So basically for ID number one, we are simply going to uh, iterate over. So we are going to find top five values, which are these values. We are going to keep adding them up. And uh, after that, we will divide it with five. So for ID number one, we are going to find the average as 87. And then once we are at this stage and we have already calculated the average, 
if we keep iterating over our array we are going to find that there exists one more entry with id number one which is this 60 and because this is already sorted and we have already calculated the top five entries that we could find over here we don't need to use this case so we can simply ignore the scenario and we would move forward up until we will find the next id now in this case we will find the next id over here this id number two so again for id number two we are going to do the same process we are going to iterate over first five elements and we will keep on doing the sum of their scores and once we re once we get the score we are simply going to divide it with five so even for id number two we are going to keep adding all the values divided it by five and we will find the average for id number two to be 88 now since we have both of these answers stored we can simply return and we can will simply keep on adding a 2d keep on adding these values to a two to to a two dimensional array and we will simply return this at the end uh, so this would be 87 88 and this would be our answer now we can notice over here that because we had the sorted input it becomes pretty easy for us and we can simply iterate over the sorted uh, array just once and then we will be able to uh, generate this answer now if we calculate the time and space complexity in this case well the time complexity for this case would be uh, actually n log n uh, and the reason it's n log n is because though iterating over this input uh, this sorted input is only n work but the thing is we will have to first from this input generate the sorted input and that actually can takes a uh, big o of log n log n time and that is why the overall time complexity is going to be n log n and if we see the space complexity in this case it would be big o of n as well because we are creating uh, an additional sorted array where we are storing all these values now in terms of time and space complexity the next approach I am proposing is also going to be the same time and space complexity. So if you want to end your video, you can end it over here. There is nothing more optimal that is coming your way. So essentially in the given input, we are basically given two things, ID and score. And the most critical part to solve this problem is actually to identify top five scores uh, for every single ID. Uh, and in order to achieve that we have already tried sorting method like but the thing is there exists a better approach and in that better approach what we are going to do is we are going to create a hash map now inside the hash map uh, we are going to treat id as key so key would be id and inside the values we are going to keep track of whatever the scores we are given for this given input but the thing is the way we are going to keep track of the scores is actually a little bit interesting. We are actually going to keep track of scores in an uh, decreasing order. So the way we are going to keep track of uh, the scores in decreasing order will allow us to identify the top five scores in this case that essentially for this course, we will have uh, some sort of queue or list and we only need to select first five element and we can ignore rest of them. So let's see that what I mean. So suppose in this case, we start iterating over this, uh, uh, this input and we will first of all, check that whether ID exists in this new, uh, hash set. If it does, uh, we will update the value in the score. If it does not exist, we will add the value. So initially we find that the ID is one. Now ID number one does not exist. So we will create an entry over here that ID number one. And now the score we are given is 91. So we'll just enter the score. Now again, we identify ID number one and ID number one exists. Now the score is 92, which means uh, that inside the scores, we are putting a condition that we are only going to keep the stores in a decreasing order, which means that now we will have, have to update the score like this. Again, we find ID number two. Now ID number two does not exist. So we'll have to make an entry and score is 93. Now again, the score is 97. So again, since we are keeping track everything in decreasing order, so we will have to uh, replace the values now again id number one now this is 60 so 60 can directly be appended at the end of this uh, whatever data structure we have now uh, we have 77 again we can append 77 over here this one is 65 for id number one now 65 needs to go in over here so we will have to update the value like this and now this one is 87 
So next value is 87. Again, we will have to update the value like this. Now next value is 100. So for 100, we will have to update all the values. Now even for ID number two, we have 100. So we'll have to update all the values. Last one is 76. So we can simply append that value uh, to at the end. And now essentially we have iterated over this input. We have created this new data structure. If you see the qualities of this, this new data structure, it serves our needs essentially we are given ids now if you see the ids they are sorted in uh increasing order so initially I, this is id number one id number two if we had id number three over here it would be placed somewhere at the bottom if we see the number of scores we are given for this id number one we are given six different scores but thing is they are all in decreasing order which means that since we are only worried about top five scores we only need to select first five entries and whatever the remaining values we can simply ignore that same we are going to do for this value number two that we are only concerned with the top five values and if there existed any other values we would have ignored that but that is not the case in this scenario and now it becomes really easy for us to identify that what is the average of these five values and we can simply do the sum of them and divide it by five and whatever average we find we can just create our answer uh, two dimensional array and we can simply put it over here so that for value number one the average is going to be 87 for value number two the average is going to be 88 and this would be our final solution now if we see the time complexity and space complexity in this one uh, first we will have to identify that how we are going to implement all of this over here and the way to implement this is this is actually a hash map but the thing is we are directly not going to use a hash map we are actually actually going to implement a tree map over here and why we are choosing tree map because tree map has a property that it automatically sorts all the values based on its uh, uh, id or key so since we uh, we already need that so we are we are good with that now in terms of the second property for this tree map we will also have to see that how we are going to store these values. Now these for, for storing these values, the important property we need is that at any point we insert any value, we will need to insert it in the right place and we will need to maintain the decreasing order in this case. So in order to maintain the decreasing order, the best data structure to use this is to actually use a priority queue in this manner. And in the priority queue, we are actually going to uh, flip the basic condition like originally in the priority queue whenever you store the value all the value gets stored in an increasing order but the thing is over here since we are using max heap we are going to need decreasing order so that's why we are going to revert whatever the entry we have for this priority queue and this is how we are going to use an additional data structure to solve this problem so now if we calculate the time and space complexity for time complexity essentially we are going to do big o of n log n work in total because uh, first we will have to iterate over this input that takes n work then we will have to create this tree map and fill in all the values uh, also we will have to maintain the priority queue that takes n log n work and uh, in the end we will have to generate this answer so this takes n work because we will have to iterate over whatever this tree map is so the biggest the longest work we are going to do is going to be n log n and in terms of space complexity we are creating this additional data structure to store all the values so that's why we are going to use uh, big o of n uh, as additional space complexity so if you see this this is also same as our sorted uh, approach like time complexity and space complexity are not different at all but the thing is in this approach we are actually doing things pretty smartly and as mentioned like suppose rather than in this case we are given the problem for student and scores suppose we could have been given the problem of uh, any any particular player and uh, their goal scoring average so we need to calculate something related to that or we could have given scenario where any company stock performance over the last five years and we need to select the top 
performing four quarters out of amongst those five years for all the companies and we need to return them in a sorted manner like these are all the different ways where how this question can be framed but we can actually use it and uh, provide the answer using this max heap concept uh, also there is another way to solve this problem using min heap uh, so let me know in the comments if you want me to solve the min heap as well and i can i can also show you to show you that approach First of all, we are going to create our tree map where uh, in the key we are going to store the ID and uh, as the value we are going to store a priority queue. We are going to name it scores. Now we are going to iterate over the given input uh, array and uh, we are going to store uh, all the values to our tree map so the first value inside the given input array at the zeroth index is going to be id so we are going to create a new new variable called id and the second value is going to be score So first we are going to check that if the current ID already exists inside our hash map or not and if it does not exist we will add it there. And we are also going to initialize a priority queue to manage the heap property where we are going to store all the values in a decreasing manner. And in by default all the values in the in the priority queue are stored in an increasing manner so this is the way to reverse that order i'm sure that different languages will have different formatting but that is the general idea and once that happens we are going to update uh, the value of scores uh, score for every single uh, id okay now this uh, hash map should, should have all the uh, values stored and now we simply have to iterate over it and generate our answer so first we are going to create a list of integer uh, where we are going to store all the answers now we are going to iterate over the new hash map that we have created for every single id we are going to calculate the value of sum so initially we are going to have the value as zero and now we are going to uh, iterate over the first five elements inside the priority queue and every single time we are going to increase the value of sum and since this is a queue we are simply going to poll values every single time and once that is done we can simply and uh, we can simply store the results inside our uh, list that we had created and for the sum we are going to divide it by 5 because we need to store the average okay so now we are done with all our calculation now we simply need to uh, create a two dimensional array and store the value of whatever the uh, answer we have found and return that so we are going to name it as answer array and uh, now we will return the this newly created answer array and uh, yeah that's this should be our uh, answer let's try to run this code seems like our solution is working let's try su submitting this problem okay our submission works pretty fine and uh, i would be posting this code in the solution uh, or in the comments you can check it out from there